What's up, Criticals? Kashmir, what's up, man? I want to get some more people on here. Let's talk about let's talk about some some things here. What do we got? What's up, man? What's happening, Venom? What up? Drinking that water. Drinking that water. All right. Let's talk about some shit. All right. So I know there's like only four of you on right now, but usually, uh, usually more people jump on. So here's my thing. Here's my thing. Okay. So with this whole beat selling thing, mean lean max beats machine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what up? So check it out. You guys, I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of messages and I really do appreciate getting the messages because I, I feel really like, I finally feel like I have like this purpose that I've been searching for for a long time and it wasn't making money or anything like that because I know how to do that. It was being part of a community and actually being able to like speak up and kind of like, I have this thing where I learned that when I started getting asked to do like live seminars and things. And I've done a bunch of them. And I'm actually, I'm actually going out to New Mexico this week to speak uh, at a big film festival. I, um, I find that I'm nervous at first, but when I start talking and getting the nerves out, I start realizing that the things that I'm saying, like it would be unfair for me not to share some of that stuff with somebody. It would be unfair, not really unfair. Cause you don't, you, you don't have an obligation to help anybody. Um, nobody really, not, not nobody really helped me, but if I could help somebody make their life a little bit easier and like steer clear of some pitfalls in life, then why wouldn't I, why wouldn't I do that? It doesn't hurt me. Okay. So that's, that's a big thing that you're going to, you're going to figure out through all this beat selling stuff that there's a lot of people out here that want to sell beats. There's more people out here that want to sell beats than, um, I don't know. It's, it's just, there's so many fucking you guys are so many of us that are like trying to do the same thing. And I got to say that there's going to be a good 60 to 70, maybe 80% of the people out here that are going to, they're going to quit this at some point. And that, why I'm saying that is because it's no different than the gym memberships in January. Everybody wants to get in shape, but until they realize how fucking hard it is to get in shape, that gym membership is just like, it was just something they said they, they wanted to do and they went and signed up. But... <clears throat> My big thing here, my big issue with, with everybody that's hitting me up is that they're telling me the work that they're doing. And they're telling me like, they're, they're asking me questions like, yo, how do I make more money? How do I sell beats? How do I sell this? How do I sell that? How do I, um, I've been doing all these things in the last couple of days and no sales. Okay, well, I gotta tell you something. I have gone long periods of time with no sales and it is directly equal to the work that I'm doing. If I stopped, stop promoting and stop marketing and stop putting myself out there, my sales stop too, they slow down. And doing one day of work or two days of work or even a week of work doesn't automatically, doesn't automatically put you in a place where it's like, I should be making sales now. Because there was a two or three month period, like at the beginning of my beat selling journey where I sold one beat at the, at the beginning. Like the first week my website went live, I sold a beat. And I was like, oh, this is cool. This is easy. 25 bucks, right? This was like 2014 or 2013. I had to make another sale for three months. But what I did in those, in those three months was this. I went on Google Plus and I found, and I found groups. And I made a long, like, um, I don't know if you guys have seen my video that circulates on Facebook. I, I have an ad running for it where it's just like me turning around in a chair in the studio from a few years ago and just kind of introducing myself. And it's really corny, it's really cheesy, but it's got like 70,000 views and I'll tell you what, it does its job. I am introducing myself, I'm telling you what I'm all about and what I do, and not once in that video do I say to anybody, and please go to my site right now and buy some beats. I, I never say that. As a matter of fact, I never say that to anyone ever. Get that, listen to what I'm saying. I never say to somebody, go buy my beats or go buy this or go buy that. I merely just introduce myself, let them know what I'm about. And I do it in a way where it's almost like, you know, I know they wanna know a little bit about me or I know it's the right timing. Timing is everything when it comes to sales. Now I have done sales in my life. 
I did door to door sales. That's the hardest kind of sales. And I think I might've been 20 years old at the time, 21. And I was making like $600 a week doing door to door sales. And I absolutely fucking hated it. I hated it. They would drop me off in the territory. I didn't even have a car at the time. And they would be like, all right, we'll pick you up at 6, 6 p.m. tonight. Here's a hundred things you got to sell. I would sell. I'd make 120 bucks a day. Um, and I learned a lot in it too. Cause the one thing that I learned from that job was we had like morning, like rallies. We had morning, like teachings on how to sell somebody face to face, the right things to say, to wait, to make them like want the product you have. And I gotta tell you, it never had to do with buy this, buy this thing here. So how does somebody go into a car dealership and walk out with a 30 or $40,000 purchase? There's times when people go in there and they do that and they don't have no money. They barely have any money to pay their fucking bills, but they're still gonna go in there and they're gonna buy a car, and they do. The salesman does not have to say to them, come on, buy this car. A good salesman will never do that. A good salesman will just be there for you. They'll be there, be there to say, listen, this is what we have here, this is what we do. If you have any questions, just let me know, I'm gonna be inside, okay? That's the same approach that I take with my production business, my beat selling business. I never say, hey, buy this. Buy this, buy this, buy this. If somebody says to me, hey, I'm looking for a track like X, Y, and Z, I might say, all right, cool. Well, my website is maxbeats.com. You might, you might find something there. I'm never like, yeah, go there. I got all the best tracks. You're gonna find everything you need there. Yo, that's called a hard sell, and hard sell, you know what it does? Um, put a leash, I have a dog. You put a leash around your dog, right? And the dog, you wanna, you wanna get the dog to come with you. Well, you don't rip the dog like that. The more you pull on that leash, the more that dog wants to get away from you. So what you do is you put the leash on and you hold it, you hold it very gently and you just, not just the dog, very comfortable, get very comfortably. Just saying, hey, this is like where I, I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm gonna be over here, I'm gonna be over here and the dog goes, all right, I'm gonna go with you. So it's the same kind of thing where like, the more you tell somebody to do something, the less they are likely to do it. And that includes in this whole thing. So when you guys are like hitting up artists and all kinds of, I never hit up artists. I mean, I'm not gonna say like, I don't comment on their stuff and do all the things that, you know, those things that, we're, that we talk about a lot, but it's rare. It's not something I do every day. It's not, it's not like one of my frequent things that I do. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, get, I get a lot of emails and like DMs from people saying like, things are not working for them. It's not, they're doing a lot and it's just not working for them. And um, hold on, you guys still here? All right, cool. It's still not working for them. And I'm like, well, it's gonna work if you keep going. In the time when things are slow for me, that's the time when I start doing other things. Like that's when I start finding, like researching and finding what the trends are. And that's when I do my beat uploads. And you know, I even said it recently, like I sold off a bunch of tracks exclusives that like I made well over 10 years ago. And you're like, you know, why didn't they sell last year or the year before or the year before that? It doesn't matter, they sold without me having to talk to anybody about it. See, what happens is artists and writers and people that know about you, they're not gonna let you know right off, right off the bat that they wanna buy something. And if you expect that someone's gonna go and listen to your musical product and they're just gonna buy it like that, you're not, you're not Beyonce and you're not, you know, Little Nas X with the, the song playing on the radio all day and night. People gotta get to, they gotta get to know you. They've gotta go to your outlet where you keep your music and they wanna be left alone. They wanna do this like in private, incognito, go on your page and on your site and just listen to music. Just listen, 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 listen. And they be, may be listening to your beats for three months before they make a purchase. And how do I know this? I know this because I've asked my clients and my, my, the people that buy music from me, once they hit me up and they go, yeah, I just bought some tracks from you, man. They're really fucking good. I love them. I'll be like, oh, thank, thanks so much. I really, I really appreciate it. And if you, you know, need anything else, let me know. And then we might talk for a little bit and then I'll throw it in the middle of the conversation. So how'd you find out about Max Beats? I'm just curious. And then they'll tell me, they'll say, hey, I was on Google. I did a search or you have a post that you put up and I, you know, I read the post that like you have, you got payment plans and things like that. And um, so I actually did a sale from, you know, a few artists this week that saw that I posted something about Max Beats has payment plans. And nowhere did it say, go buy any beats from me. It just said some information about what I have available and leave it to the people who need the product that you have to make up their own mind 
to buy when they're ready. Now the deal is you've got to, you want to try to get hundreds of people to know who you are throughout the course of a month or the course of a few months and get all of those people to listen to tracks on your site, they will come back, they will buy it, I promise you. They will come back at some point if your stuff is good and you have a good layout on your site, you have a trustworthy looking site and you make everything very easy for them to understand, they're gonna buy from you. But you gotta be patient, they're not gonna buy from you today just because you want them to. Did I get any sales today? I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got some sales today. They were lease sales and uh, I'm fine with the amount that I got today it wasn't huge, but better than going to, you know, somebody's, somebody, you know, some job and to make that. I was sitting around doing other things when I, when I made my sales. So um, I also have probably eight or nine exclusive negotiations. I sold five exclusives in the last week and a half. And um, I'm, I'm actually setting up payment plans with artists right now also, which is, it's important because these are not cheap things here. Like you have to understand who your clients are. Your clients are now all rich people. They are people that are trying to get to a place like you're trying to get to a place. You're trying to build a catalog and trying to make money with your craft. They too are trying to make money with their craft as singers, as songwriters. And they realize there are artists out there that realize that they have to pay to play. And that's what I tell people, you, have to, you, you gotta pay to play. Don't You can't come at me and say, hey, I want this for free because it's not gonna happen. As a matter of fact, I don't even give any free beats out. That's done, I'm done with that. It has not adversely affected my business. So if you're getting people that are just taking free shit from you, those people have no intention of buying. They really don't. It's very rare that somebody will say, hey, I just want this free thing from you. Um, can I just give you credit? Listen, on YouTube, I understand it's the norm that there's gonna be people that do that, but not the artists that are gonna make, you know, that are gonna put records out and shit's gonna circulate and you're gonna make royalties in the future off of it too. That's what you want. Um, so it's, you're welcome Studio 550, I appreciate you watching. Um, if you guys wanna tag other people to come in and watch too, I would love to talk more about this. If not, I'll probably make this shorter than I was going to, but if more people come in, it'd be great. So I don't like to repeat it, everything over and over again. Oh, I think my little, my daughter's coming here. What's up, baby? Hi. Good? Yeah, my little three-year-old, she's the best. Come here, my little diva, I put a picture of her up earlier. This is the little, this is the baby, the baby uh, Mig over here. This is uh, this is Lucy. Say hi to everybody. Wave hi to everybody. Lucy actually has her own Instagram account. She's already a, a brand ambassador for a few fashion companies for kids, which is crazy. Um, so she's got her own IG. It's pretty. It's pretty cute, right? Do you get you get free hair bows and stuff. Mm -hmm. You do, right? Give me a kiss. This is what we do it for. I've got five of these things running around the house. Go, go ahead, baby. No, daddy, finish, okay? Love you. Go. So. Um, so, I mean, let me see, where was I? So you're, you're not salesmen. That's the thing that you have to get through your head. You're not salesmen. Do you have to learn some things about sales? Yeah, you do. Because you have to help your client or your customer through a process sometimes that's expensive, like a thousand dollar exclusive. Um, it's a scary thing for them to part with their money, not knowing you. So you've got to know some kind of sales psychology in order to learn how to be as somebody who wants to build a business, learn how to make people feel at ease, mm. but you don't hit people on the shoulder and go, hey, I got some beats for you. Do you know how many guys are on Instagram and on YouTube and on all these platforms that are doing exactly the same things? That's why I don't. I don't do the same things. I might have just commented on maybe five artists this whole week, but I'm making sales and that's it, I'm running some ads, I do advertising. I do like a $5 a day thing. I do some Google advertising and um, just to get some traffic to my site in the first place. I actually redid my site at um, yesterday and then I was up again at 2.30 a.m. today, working on that too. So it's a constant, it's a constant thing. You guys can't just expect to like put up a BeatStars account and like put up some fucking beats and then all of a sudden you're making money. It does not work like that. It doesn't, it doesn't, it don't, it doesn't work like that. I really have to break the misconceptions because what's gonna happen is some of you that shouldn't quit are gonna quit because you're gonna get frustrated and go, I don't know, I'm not making any sales, man. I've been doing all the stuff that this paper course I down, this PDF course I downloaded from so-and-so on the internet said to do. Yeah, there's techniques that people will tell you to do that might do something for somebody, but you're not them, you're not that person. It may not work for you. Now, 
there is somebody on here, not on this thread right now, but like who's connected to me on IG, a 16 year old beat maker who came to me and said, I have no idea what I'm doing. It's been three months. I have not made one sale. And I did give him some advice and I wrote an exact script for him and he went and within a few days had sold an exclusive and I think five leases and hit me up and was like, man, I can't believe it. Like it was, so, it was, was not that hard. I said, it's not because you're not selling anymore. It's hard when you're trying to tell somebody, hey, buy this thing from me and everybody's doing, hey, buy this thing from me. You gotta stand out and you gotta be professional and telling somebody to buy something from you is not being professional. That's like those fucking guys in the movies that are on the street in New York and they open their jacket like, yo, you want some watches? You want some this? It's, it's, it's trashy, it's, it's not professional, it's not business. People say to me, how do you sell so many exclusives and make the bigger, the bigger money? Because when I deal with clients, they feel comfortable with spending that kind of money with me. They'll, they'll, they'll go like this or write a check or send me or, you know, do a credit card. Because when I talk to them, <laughs> I don't have the PDF yet. See, I don't even have a course. If I made a course, I probably would be like doing very well with that course. And you guys would be too. Which I am kind of thinking about it, but the problem is I have ADHD and I don't know how to organize all my ideas. So my wife yells at me. She's like, not yells at me, but she's the one who maybe, she's the one who actually maybe come on here and start doing all this stuff because she's like, you don't understand the stuff that's up inside your head. You have to get it out because you can. I'm like, I don't know how. I don't really know what people want to even know. I don't know what people know or they don't know or understand or don't understand. She says I yell at her when she's on the laptop and like we're doing graphic design for the for audio swag for our, our gear, our merch company. And like I'm yelling at her because she don't know how to do a certain function in, in Photoshop. And yeah, I get it. Like I have a lot of stuff that goes on in here. I don't know how to get it out. So I always rely on you guys to come to me and say, this is the problem I'm having. And I'm like, oh shit, I can answer that. I know how to answer that. But um, let me see, uh, I'm not 16, but they say I look young. It was, I know Venom. So that would be, that, yeah, I mean, look, if you guys want, I'll start with like little, very inexpensive things that I can put together, but realize at some point I'm gonna sell them. And why am I gonna sell them? Because they're gonna take me a lot of time to put together. And that's time is money. If I'm, not, if I'm making those things to give out to people so I can talk a little bit less, but still provide you with all the stuff that I know. And if we're talking about 20 plus years of major label production, songwriting, publishing. Um, if I sit down to do that, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna do that for like a month or two and it's gonna be awesome. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it or when I'm gonna do it or what, or if I'm gonna do it, but I'd like to. It's just once again, getting my thoughts and everything organized is really difficult because I'm creative like you guys. I wanna just make music, 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 music and I realize that I have to do all this other stuff. So that's why I haven't done anything like that yet. So. Let me see. Um, you guys can ask questions. You know, go ahead. Don't sleep. I don't sleep, man. Yes, I am taking questions. And I would love questions because it helps me. It helps me give you what you guys need. Um, you go live with some and we'll organize it for you. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have interns um, and I have my wife helping out. My brother-in-law helps out. But you guys are really what's important as far as like your questions are so important to me because then I can say... I'm gonna spend the next month literally making a fucking blueprint roadmap. And I know you got Curtis King out there and you got, you know, my boy DJ Payne One. You got a lot of guys out there and they're so good. They're so talented in the way they give their knowledge out. I'm in a different different career path from day one than those guys. And um, so I think that my angle is also my own. And that is not to take a thing away from them because they are, like I said, they're awesome. And um they're doing it too. So there's nothing wrong with getting information from different people. Mine is a little different. I started out in the pop world. I started out as a pop songwriter. I was a songwriter, traveled the world, working with different producers and writing lyrics for them. I wasn't a beat maker. I did make beats like back in the day and produce, but that wasn't what people called on me for. They actually called on me as a lyricist and a, and a singer. So um, I did all that stuff first. And then I, I ended up going from doing R&B and pop and then getting thrown into the world of dance music, which was not my thing. A lot of people come to me and go, Mig, so you primarily do dance music. I'm like, let me see. Oh, hold on, guys. You gotta be quiet, baby. I'm talking to the people, okay? Okay, he's talking to the people on on the internet, okay? Do you want to sit in my lap? No. You want to sit right there? Okay. She's the best. Um, but what I was going to say is I come from a, a lot of different lanes. So... 
I have relationships with major label presidents and vice presidents and I had great relationships over the years with a lot of these guys, legendary guys, legendary engineers. Um, just, just was able to just really build good friendships with these people. And I'm not going to say it taught me a lot because it didn't. I didn't like sit there and like get knowledge from a lot of them. But you stay in that circle and you meet enough people that way. It's like this. You stay in this circle. You're going to meet my people too. You're going to meet like uh, Rob Schwartz who has Humag Distribution. Rob does like, he distributes like KRS-One and Tribe Called Quest. And he's right in my office with me. And then you got Gino Caparelli who is the label owner for 418 Music, which is now the number one independent dance music imprint in the United States, Billboard Magazine, end issue 2018, and I'm the head of a &R there. Good job, baby. Give me a kiss and go upstairs. Do the best. Are you going to stay here? Okay. So there's things that, yeah, Vinny knows. Vin, Vinny Venom right here, he's worked with us on, on a single that he, that he put up. But um, the thing is, like, I come from a different place. I don't come from... My crazy pants over here literally swung her blanket. She's three and knocked the entire tripod over. So let me get you guys set up again here real quick. Get this set up so we can talk. Talk, talk, talk here. All right. Yeah, Dad. All right. Okay. So um, don't they just buy from you? Who's that? Doesn't who just buy from me? Akira? Let me hear this. Let me hear the full question. Didn't they just buy from you? I don't know who they is. Didn't they just buy from me? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. 418 Music is my is like my best friend. Like we he started that five six years ago, and I've been there since day one. So we're in the same office. So there's Max Beats and Audio Max Studios. Then I have Humag, which is Rob Schwartz, and you can look him up. Look at at Humag W H O M A G here on on, on Instagram. That's somebody you should be following too. World of Hip Hop distribution through Sony Orchard. Um, you can get all your albums put out, whatever, uh, through the best distributor in the world. And then you have, um, you got uh, 418, like I said, which is a huge dance label, which I'm trying to get him to kind of open up a little bit more so we can do a little bit more. Yeah, okay, we'll be here. Do a little bit more on the urban side. But, you know, you got you to gotta take the label slowly to a place where it needs to go as it starts succeeding. So not too much at one time. Migs will tell about me, my music and videos. Yes, I'm brutally honest with people. One thing you don't have to worry about me is being a fucking liar. If you do something that I think is stupid for you or non-beneficial for you, I will tell you that is, I think I, I think you guys can see a post that I, um, or someone that I responded to today. Maybe you're on here right now, but I wasn't afraid to say, look, you're, you don't have the right links in your bio. You know, you ask people to check you out. No one's going to go and check all those, you know, going to hunt you down. Like, I will tell you that stuff because that's kind of like a, what a big brother or an uncle does. You guys, a lot of you guys are probably really young and you could consider me like Uncle Mig, AKA Max Beats, um, or for, you know, the middle aged like I am, we're like brothers, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you see. When Daddy hold you? When Daddy hold you while he talks? No, you can stay over here. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you guys have to understand, I mean, the, the moral of this whole thing here is that for any of you that are hitting people up constantly and wondering why they're not buying from you, it's because this is not like the meat market where like, you know, where you just go in and you're like, there's meat there, I'm gonna just buy the meat and walk out. You're on Instagram. This is not a beat selling platform. This is a place where people, it's social media. Be social, build relationships. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So like. I've met a bunch of artists and we just talk like we just talk about stuff. They know what I do. They know what they see what's going on. I know that it's hard to sit there and go, oh, man, I just want to make this one sale or this second sale. But that's you, you're talking to human beings. You're not putting a quarter in a fucking video game in, in, in whatever. Dave and Buster is down in Philly or, you know, redeeming points to like get to the next level in a video game in, in on an Xbox one. You are talking to human beings that have other things on their mind. Build a relationship with them and I guarantee when you build enough relationships, you'll have a bunch of people that always keep you in mind. There's some people on the thread right now here that, that, that have bought tracks from me. You know, after many 
years of knowing each other and they just started buying tracks from me recently and I appreciate it, but I never once said to them, yo, go buy some tracks from me. They did it because they got to a point where they were ready to do that and that's okay. So for you guys that are frustrated, you know, drop me some questions here. I mean, I don't know if anybody's still on because I see it's, um, it's, it's a little quiet on your end, you guys. Didn't they just buy from you? So, all right. Anybody else? Are you guys on here? Anybody here? Who else is here? I want to see who else is here. All right. Fan base that going to get people like Migs and Migs to notice. Um, is that a question, Vinny? I don't know. Hey, Akira, what's up, man? So, yeah, you guys have to understand something. I don't want to trash anybody, but there's a lot of information that goes on around here, around the beat selling community, and it's the same fucking regurgitated shit, and it doesn't work. A lot of it doesn't work now. It might have worked before, but it doesn't work now because you ever hear of saturation? Saturation means when there's too much of one thing in the same place, that's what happens. There's so many beat makers on beat stars and other platforms now, and it's becoming very super popular where in 2013, 14 for me, I was actually ranked at the top of all the charts, but it wasn't that like the competition that there is right now. Like there's just so many people. That's saturation. But what happens is you're also saturating the shit out of your potential customers. Be the one who doesn't annoy them. Be the one who doesn't say, hey, I got 10 beats for $10. Like, stop. Just stop it. Stop all that shit. Have some confidence in yourself. Have some confidence that you have good music, that you are out there building relationships slowly and steady. And by next year, come back and let's talk about it and see how well some of you have done. And I know some of you won't be here at that point. You'll be gone. You will have quit. That's going to happen. Out of the people that's on this thread right now, there's going to be some of you that will quit. That's okay. If you find something else that works for you, this isn't for everyone. See, I'm, a, I'm an animal. I'm an animal in life in general. I'm not just about this. This was something I didn't even know about until 2013, until someone told me to like do it. It's like, yeah, I should do it. All right. I was used to just being hired by labels back in the day and like you would make a track for the artist because you were writing with them and that was it. Like when it was over, it was over. Or, you know, but I had a lot of stuff left over from demos that I wrote and I was like, ah, I'll give this a shot. I went and went to a few sites and was seeing what they were all about and learned a little bit about what they were doing by looking at it and analyzing and going through the process of buying something from them. And I said, okay, I get it now. I get what this is all about. So let me see, longe longevity, but who goes to like, school for a week and then says, how come I'm not a doctor yet? Like, this is no fucking different than that. And that's what upsets me for some of you guys. It upsets me for you. Don't upset me for me because I'm still doing what I'm doing. It upsets me because you think that you're just going to do a little bit of work for a week or two weeks, three weeks, a month, and then be like, I'm quitting or this is just bullshit. I've had people in my life that have told me about certain opportunities I've hooked them up with. This is a scam. It's bullshit. It's not going to work. And then they are making, you know, a thousand dollars a week. This is not beat selling, this is something else, but music related, they're making a thousand dollars a week doing what they love, and it's because I told them, trust me, it's not bullshit. You're frustrated because you had some bad experiences, but it's not bullshit. You gotta just keep doing what you're doing. So, um, you know, we're, we're, you're gonna have those months where you've only made a few leases or a few sales, and I have months where, you know, I might sell 30, 40 tracks, and I have months where I might sell 100, so it's, I'm not to that level yet of like some of these guys that have these viral YouTube videos. Although I have one video that's growing right now and I'm like happy. It's like at 10,000 for me. That's big. It's a big deal. I don't have a lot of videos that are ranking high because I really just started my YouTube um, for beats last year. I, I was not doing it until last year. So and once again, I'm frustrated. I'm like, shit, man, when am I going to get that one? That's got, you know, half a million or a million plays. And I'm like, guess what? It's going to happen when it happens. If it happens, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm up there updating keywords all the time. I'm changing thumbnails. I'm doing all that stuff. So when I'm not like making beats, I'm doing a lot of shit pertaining to building this business. And it excites me because I'm in control of it, really. And there's so many people out there that want to buy what I have. And I know that. And there's so many people out there that are going to want to buy what you have. All right, let me read this. Cadiz Music. What should I do if I start conversation with any, with any question? The guy answered to it. And that's all my conversation. Do I need to ask him a lot of, shouldn't ask anybody anything. You're not interrogating people. You're introducing yourself. It's that's different. That's you just, Hey, here. Okay. Here's a perfect introduction to somebody. 
if you saw a video of them and you thought they had like a nice voice or they, they did really well on the song, like the video. Like the video, follow them. And if you want, go to their DM and say, hey, address them by their name. I just want to let you know I liked what you were doing, so I gave you a follow, okay? So just want to let you know I just followed you, and it's really nice to meet you. Have a great day. And just get the fuck out of there. They have to be reciprocating. They got to open They got to open the conversation. So it takes two people to open a conversation. So you don't ask people questions. You ain't there yet. You ain't at the point where you're asking people questions. You're at the point where you're just introducing yourself. Imagine somebody comes up to you and goes, hey, my name. Imagine I come up to you and go on the street. Hey, my name's Mig. So what's your birthday? Where are you from? How much money you make? What do you do for a living? Like, you just don't do that. You guys got to approach a bit your business. To make sales, you have a sales business. And, but it's also a service business and you have to approach it and always keep this one fucking thing in mind. Those people are human beings like you. Think about what you're about to say to them and, st- and, and the situation that it's like the context that it's in and think about what you would, someone would say that to you and what would your reaction be to them? If somebody said to you, Hey, what's up? Let me see. Okay. Hey, cash. Hey, cash man. What's up, man? So I got. You know, um, I'm, a, I'm a songwriter and I got all these hooks and like I write, I, you know, I got I got all these hooks that be great on your beats. And, you know, why don't you buy these hooks from me? Oh, do you buy hooks? Do you, you know, do you like songs? Do you like songwriters? Like you're going to be like, yo, get the fuck out of here. I'm here to do my thing, which is find people that want to buy my stuff, my tracks. But someone's out there just to do their own thing. They're like on here looking at pictures of family and friends. They're on here. They want to post their songs that they just sung, that they just sang, because they want to get, they want to get attention back to their music in a positive way, so that they know what they're doing is right, and also so they could build their fan base. Now, the way you get in between that is you're not a fan. You don't have to be a fan, right? You're not, you're not, so what you do is you get in between there by becoming a friend. So you don't need to be a fan. You need to be a friend, and that's not something you could bullshit and fake and like. I hate I hate scumbag salespeople. I hate people that are like, I see a lot of shit, uh, you know, about courses this and courses that. But those courses are not like actually like let me teach you the fucking ropes of this thing, and then I want you to take those those things and kind of make it your own. But what I'm going to teach you, I legitimately have done and made millions of dollars doing. So like, I say that because the things that I'm going to teach you guys ended up resulting in millions of dollars for me and it's not just and it's not beat sales it's not like the online beat sales like download my tracks yeah there's, a, there's some guys out there you got that i don't count their money because i don't know what they're making but they're making like large money off of the beat sales themselves but the rest of us have to do that and other things and like i got into publishing and i got into producing for you know major acts at one point in my career and i haven't been doing it now i'm getting back to it again and then like I remixed over like 300 major artist records, official remixes. You could go out there and see it remixed by Mr. Mig or Mr. Mig remix. And they were, you know, iconic, iconic records. They were like huge. Like my first remix ever sold 500,000 copies and it became, a, it pushed the record to 3 million on the uh, sales chart. The remix was on five billboard charts. This is a long time ago. But what I'm trying to say to you is that like everybody on here has a goal. And you guys have goals too, but you got to think a little bit beyond like, I just want people to go there and click the download button and buy my beats. And while they're not doing that, you got to think of the other things that you are and work on those things too. And and keep building yourself strong, becoming a stronger brand. I mean, you guys see like, I post things about like, I used to just do what a lot of you guys are doing. I used to just put up spammy fucking posts because I didn't know any better. I honestly didn't know how, how like this shit worked until like it clicked and it really clicked very recently because I always thought like you know you just put up a nice picture and like see if see if anything happens with it and I'm not up here to put nice pictures up I'm pu- I'm here to put pictures that result in you wanting to look at them to see what the content below it is about for instance like I just put up an EQ tip uh, something I was working on tonight and I'm like you know this really always does help with the snare drum for me. So why don't I just make that a tip real quick? It's gonna help somebody. It's gonna and it's gonna help my it's gonna help my account because you guys are gonna look and you're gonna read and then you're gonna look, you know, stay engaged. And I like to go to places where I'm engaged with like content.
So let me read some of this stuff here real quick. I mean, dialogue stops instantly. He can answer. Thanks, bro. That's all my... Right, well, then move on. That's not, that's not the right person. All right. Sales is a numbers game, okay? He goes with this every single minute. All right. Beats are just a bottleneck. I want way more from this. All right, so... The artist songs. What if I tell you that... I have repeatedly, with my promo company, have gotten people to write $40,000 checks. Like, repeatedly. $40,000, $40,000. We do, sir, we have services where, you know, and this is back in the day um, where I was doing huge, not even back in the day, it's a few years ago, doing huge campaigns for like the Billboard charts and international radio and DJ charts and just doing like these four month campaigns that were getting artists like positions on things. And it's different now. Uh, there's a lot of bot shit that goes on and all that stuff, and I've kind of pulled away from some of that stuff, but I didn't have a problem getting even 40 grand out of people, 20 grand, 30 grand. Now, mind you, that didn't go into my pocket because I pay out an entire team of people to run campaigns for, for three or four months for artists on indie labels through my company, Headhunter Promotions. But the point is, like, think about you're trying to get someone to buy a $10 lease, and I'm telling you I could get people to spend thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Why is that? Think about that for a moment, because this is going to be a clear separator to what you're doing wrong. You guys ready? Because you're asking the wrong fucking people. You're asking the wrong people. It's as simple as that. Move on. I was asking the right people. Those people came to me and said, I have a single that I want to promote. You know, uh, you know how we can do this? Well, talk to me. What's your situation? Like, well, we have our indie label. We want to promote this artist. We really believe in him. Um, what is it that you want? I can offer you 40 different things, but... Here's the cheap, here's like the most the least inexpensive route to go. Here's the most expensive route to go, and they usually would fall in the middle and go, you know what? We want to do this package, 25k, 30k, 40k, um, and I would set them up with a with a face to face meeting with my entire promo team, and we would map out a plan and we'd write up agreements. And I do all, I do the agreements myself, man. I'm like, I know how to read and write legal language at this point because I've done so many agreements in my in my career. But the point is, I could sell somebody who wants what I have to sell. By not selling it. You guys are trying to like get someone to talk to you that doesn't want to talk to you. So fuck them. Move on. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I don't mean like fuck them like if they don't want to talk to you, they're assholes. They're not assholes. You're just, you're talking to the wrong people. You're trying to get the wrong people to buy your product. So like, let me ask you guys. Ready for this? So I put up some shirts from my company this week. I put up a really cool, cool ass fucking mug. And I never once asked any of you to buy that shit. Did you buy it? I know who bought stuff from me this week or from my swag company. The people that didn't buy it, I'm not mad at them. They're obviously not looking for shirts or for mugs that say what they say on them. Because if they were, they would have gone over there and fucking bought them. If somebody puts, if you're hungry and somebody puts a steak in front of your face and you're starving and you love steak and you're, and you're like, oh, this steak is going to be really good. I'm going to go cook the steak. And they go cook the steak and you smell it and you're like, Hmm, let me go check out that steak. Does that person have to come back to you and say, come on, man, eat this. I really need you to eat this steak. You're like, fuck it. I'm eating that steak. And you don't have to fucking tell me twice. That's the way it goes. It's the same thing with products. It's like, would you as a jeweler go on Instagram and go, hey, buy this engagement ring. I sell engagement ring. Go buy this engagement ring. Just start hitting people up and go, yo, buy this engagement ring. What makes you think when you hit somebody up on Instagram, they want to buy beats from you or anybody? What makes you think that maybe they do their own? Maybe they got a friend who does them. Maybe they have a cousin. I have plenty of clients that like come to my studio even and don't buy beats from me. I don't get fucking mad. Their, their freaking brother does them. Like he's trying to put, get himself put on too. So they're like, I'm, they're getting free tracks from their family member, exclusive rights and shit. Like, how am I going to, how am I going to compete with that? I don't, I don't even talk about it. I'm like, great. Beat sounds nice. Let's do it. Like, I don't even, I compliment them on it. So people make time for what they want. What's important to you is not important to other people. That's a thing I learned once in my life from somebody. Just not sell anything. Yes. Um, you sell by not selling. What that means is the product, if it's good, will stand on its own. It just has to be placed in the right places. That's why I run ads. Because ads will get put in hopefully the right places a lot of times. And I have this one video ad of mine that's got like 75,000 views on Facebook right now. It's got something like um, maybe 50 shares. Like so 50 people have shared it with other artists and like 145 likes 
But think about that, 70,000 views to just that little bit amount. So it's hitting people in my the demographic, but some of them just are, don't care. They're not in the mood to fucking like watch a video on video on me and my beat selling business because they're not on Facebook for that shit. They're on there to like post pictures of them at their with their girlfriend or their children or pictures of them in the studio doing their thing. So that's like a big lesson that you guys like. I really think. Let me see. Well, def, I definitely research and look at artists' page before I hit them up. Okay, well that's cool to do that. Um, what works well for me is just posting good content that in some way, shape, or form relates to an artist and to a producer to get them to read it. Like, it's... When they read it, go read my posts, guys. Read some of my posts later and see how I word stuff so you understand, like, there's zero selling going on in any any of it, but it does lead to me making money and, and sales and I get clients and they're happy, man. They're happy because they hit me up and they're like, hey, I, I'm, you know, I saw you on IG and... I saw what you posted about the payment plan thing. And like, I get people like that and like, all right, let's talk when you're ready. And I leave it at that. And I'm like, have a good night. Here's my number if you want, text me. What about when you did door to door sales? They weren't there to buy something. Exactly. But that that's this, first of all, this was 20 years ago. Let's, let's go back there. So there also wasn't an internet. People didn't have access to things that they would find interesting had you put it in front of them. So. You'd knock on your door and go, do you, do you eat at this specific restaurant? Yes, I do. Okay, what if for 20 bucks, I'm going to give you like 10 free meals at that restaurant? And they're like, for real? Like, you know, I know me. If someone came to my restaurant and said, came to my house and said, I'm going to give you 10 free meals uh, for 20 bucks at your favorite restaurant. I'm buying that shit. I'm buying three of those things. I'm giving them away to people. So it wasn't that hard. And, um, and like I said, this was a different time and era where information wasn't available. So that was the only way people got their information. They got it either from a yellow page directory, which was a big fucking book of paper that you had to go through or somebody showed up at your door. Like they still do that shit with like Jehovah's witnesses or solar. People show up at my door all the time. And guess what? I bought solar. Someone came to my door. They didn't have to sell me and they told me what it was about. And I, I asked them the questions. I was like, all right, how much am I gonna save? How much does it cost me? Sign me up. That was it. So people still do that, you know what I'm saying? So, and like I said, I didn't like the door-to-door sales thing in the first place, but that was the job that I had at the time. And it was for a marketing company and I wanted to be part of this marketing company. But I did learn, you know? I see, fuck it, Google Ads. No, Google Ads is not the only way. That's what I'm trying to say. Like. Google is one thing. I do Google ads. I do some Facebook ads. I do the YouTube thing. I do my Instagram posts. I have an email list. So for years, I gave out the free beat packs on my site. Now, I don't know what it really resulted in. I'm kind of against the whole thing. Like, you won't go on my website now and find any free beat downloads on my players or anything. I'm not doing it because I'll tell you why. It resulted in 450 free downloads of my shit last month. And I certainly didn't sell 450 downloads on top of that. So my thinking is like, those are the free people. They're looking for free shit. They can stay in their free lane. Let them stay in their free lane while I mess with the people that are serious and like are looking to buy shit. So like, I have a really cool thing that just happened. Like I had a, a client that bought bought exclusive from me from another country. Hold on a second. You want to get? You want to get her? She's right here. Hold on, my other daughter's coming here. Come say hi to my Instagram team, my Instagram family, real quick. This is my real social daughter over here. Hi. <laughs> she's taking the bit, taking nice. my little one up. Yeah, she's she's Don't out. Go lay down in bed. Um, no? where was I? Where was I? Because I was about to get to something really important for you guys that you should know about this whole thing. Refresh my memory. Someone type something. Type something so I remember where I was. Stop trying to sell, stop trying to sell ads, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. So I have a client right now that bought an exclusive. They're from another country. And I ended up that we're working together. And like, this is going to turn out to be a really crazy situation because apparently this person that's going to be on this track with us has got millions of subscribers on YouTube and is an artist. So like, I didn't even sell that person or know that person. They went to my site and they... They bought the, the track. And of course I ask, and I'll take her up. All right. 
I asked them once again, how'd you find, how'd you find the track? They said that I just Googled and found your site as one of three sites. And the first track I heard in, in, in that genre, I bought it. I was like, that's pretty dope. But then we ended up having a conversation afterwards, um, which I like. I like having a conversation um, with them when they hit me up to tell me, like, maybe a file is missing. All right, in this case, it was a file that was missing. I said, no problem. I got you. I'll take care of it. And they're like, I just want to let you know I'm an artist. I'm from this country. And uh, here's what I have going on. And um, it ended up that we're actually going to work together on not only did they buy the beat, but I'm going to work on the production end right now and, like, from A to Z to get the whole song done with this person. They're probably going to fly in from that country to do the vocals and everything. So that comes from me not selling anybody, me just putting my product in a place where they can find it and then having good customer service by getting them the files that they need it and then um, having a nice normal conversation. Where are you from? How are Like, what's your name? What got you here? And then you open up this dialogue. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it's all good, man. I, I love giving the info out. I wish there was we had more people on here that can like say this once and they can get some of this info. But yeah, so like... Yeah. I have a, quite a few artists right now that are like trying to figure out their money situation. I do my payment plan situation and kind of have some tracks on hold for people. And, um, you know, I'm like, it's, the, it's like the first week of September and I'm like already at like a possibly eight or nine exclusives done. Like, it's crazy. It, it, but that's not like that all the time. I have months where it's like, you know, 500 bucks. And I'm telling you, even me, even me. And I'm not the only one. There's people out there that you look at and you're like, they must be making a gazillion dollars. Not everybody is making all that money all the time because this is a very like, this is a very temperamental business and it's an artist driven and creative business. So months can happen where people are like listening to your stuff and like it's flattering when you find out that like, yeah, I was listening to your tracks like the last three months. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Stop the free beats download because what happens is now they get to go to your site and every time they want to hear a track, they don't get the free download. They gotta keep playing that shit on your site, and you're racking up your you're racking up your spins on your BeatStars accounts. You're racking up all that stuff. Plus, not giving them the ability to download just a free beat doesn't mean they're not gonna buy it from you. The serious ones are coming back. The ones that only wanted the free beat won't, and that's that's good. You don't want them there anyway. You don't want them there. If they can't afford twenty dollars, and they can't like forego spending that twenty dollars on some bullshit to get a track that they can write to to put on their EP or single or mixtape, mix they're not the kind of artist that you need to work with in the first place because that's that's a joke and it's sad. I've told I've actually told artists in my studio, it's pretty sad that like you you want to go on YouTube and rip a beat, but you're paying, you're paying me for studio time for four hours, but you won't pay that producer 20 bucks to license their track and I give them the whole breakdown and I make them feel so, so shitty. By the time we're done with the session, that's like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go lease that beat. I'm helping other producers make money. It's crazy. And it's true. Let me see. Being social, finding it. Yeah. What the other person is up to and what the person is doing in the process of the conversation. Then you guys talk. You should save this live and post it on my YouTube. Can I do that? I don't even know if you can. If I can, that would be cool, right? Um, I'll post it on YouTube. But think about that last thing I said about the whole free beats thing. Come up with another thing to give people when they come to your site. Give them another reason to sign up for your mailing list so that you can catch them later because I have so many people that I have tagged in my email list as free beat download users that when I look at my stats, they are the ones that hardly ever open up a fucking email. They are the ones that hardly ever convert. I'd have to tell them that I'm selling them 100 beats for $10 for those free beat users to even give a shit. And that's not the kind of people I want. I want the ones that go to my site and spend a hundred bucks a pop all day long or 200 or a thousand. I love when I get that shit ring up and it's like a thousand, 700, 1200. And guess what? This isn't the only platform I'm on too, but I'll get to that in a later date. I've actually sold thousands and thousands of dollars of beats on a completely different platform that nobody knows about. It's not even a beat selling platform, but there's hundreds of thousands of artists. And that's something I'm saving because we're not there yet. Not there yet. That's still my John right there. <laughs> Do you think saturation is across all genres? I think that the number of producers or coming up producers that want to do the same thing that you're doing and that I'm already doing is a lot. And listen, 
I love the BeatStars guys and everything else, but they've created a monster. <laughs> and it's good for them. And it's good for all the, it's good for us, for the ones that can navigate and do our thing. But it did, it does make it a little bit more traffic. There's a little bit more traffic jams going on. But like I said to you earlier in this cast, 80% of all those people will be gone. It'll be tur turning over. It's like I said, the Janu January comes and everybody's got a New Year's resolution of getting in shape. And then they buy the gym membership and they don't show up to the gym. And that's, that happens all the time. Gym business, my friend owns a very lucrative gym chain. And um, we're talking like the guy makes six figures every month like it's nothing. And said it's the best business in the world because you're selling fucking space. You're selling space because nobody shows up. Out of 45,000 members, you got 1,000 active members. So you're just getting a recurring fee every month, 20 bucks for gym membership. And no one's actually even caring about the gym. They're like, they hold on to it in the hopes that eventually they'll get in shape and they'll be fit. And that's what happens here. A lot of guys hold on to the idea of like, eventually it'll work out and then they just quit. And the, the gym goers will quit and they'll turn over and then next January, you know, another 10,000 gym members will join up. And then the following January, they'll, they'll, those people will be gone and it'll just keep going and going and going and going. So. That's the reality of sales. That is the reality of things that are hard. And this is hard. This is not easy. The only time this gets easy is when you have a big YouTube hit, like I'm not gonna name anybody, but there's some guys that right now have some records that are, I mean, some tracks that are doing very well on YouTube. And that's just more eyes on their stuff. And in turn, more people going to their site. Um, and I'm sure for them, it's not gonna be an every month thing too, because once again, it's not like a guaranteed given thing that people are gonna buy stuff from you or anybody every single month. It's it's a fluctuation, it's the economy, it's the time of year. It's, you know, if a lot of your, if a lot of my beat buyers are college kids, well, they just went back into college. So what does that mean? It means that they may not have money right now to buy beats. If they're older folk, which I actually have a lot of older clients, that's why they spend the bigger money because they have careers already. So they're like, I'm doing this on the side, you know, write my songs and try to get a publishing thing going, or just for whatever reason, they can spend more money. So I focus my tracks a lot of times and my clients on doing business with, um, I'm sorry, on doing business with people that are already kind of in a professional zone and have that extra money to spend. That's a great thing too. So you want to think about that too. One thing about the kind of clients, like businesses, there's businesses that can use instrumentals, like. I have a friend who's got a mortgage business. He, I, so he surprised me by buying one of my tracks so that he could make a video for his mortgage business. I didn't know. I had somebody buy a, a beat for an ice cream shop in like India. They wanted to do a TV commercial. So like, you guys gotta think a little bit more along the lines of what people are actually doing with your music. This is not about just rapping and singing. There's so much more out there. And um, remember, these are creative people and they don't, they're not business people. So when you talk to them about business and buying this and buying that, that's not their lane, man. You're like, you're, you're, you're killing their vibe of why they're even on here in the first place. And you, what is this? The old saying is the old school saying that my mom, you know, that I would hear is you get more bees with honey. So you put the honey, you know, you get more bees with honey. You, you just, you don't have to like swat at them or try to catch them with the net. Just it's the honey. So you want to attract people by being attractive, by, by the content that you have. You don't want to attract people by grabbing them by the neck and say, hey, buy this shit. Listen, any car I ever bought, I bought it because the salesman didn't sell it to me. It's as simple as that. The first car I rewarded myself with in the music business was at the age of 24 or 25. I bought a Corvette C5 convertible, brand new with white tape all over the hood still. Ripped that shit off at the dealership and drove out. Not one time did a salesman have to tell me, you really need to buy this car. Yeah, no shit, I need to buy this car. And I went in with, I went in with a Buick that I bought for $100 and I went out with a $65,000 convertible. Is that crazy or what? I donated that car to a family in need. It was the second time I did that um, in my career. And um, once again, I, nobody had to sell me anything. I hate when I go to a dealership and like, I know what I, I'm looking for. And someone's like, yeah, what's well, got all this, got all that. You wanna do some paperwork? Like, no. I have told people straight up, if you want me to buy this, you will just leave me alone. 
I may not buy something today. I may come back. But all I need to do is just look right now. I need to look and not be interrupted. And if it's the right thing for me, I will come and ask you the next set of questions that I need answers to. And it's the same thing. Put your shit up in front of in places where people like where they where they need what you're doing. And how do you do that? Yes, the commenting and all that stuff. That's those are good techniques for doing things. But you don't push it. Yeah, you don't push these people. No one sold me that car. They didn't need to sell me no Corvette. I went in there. I wanted a Corvette. I was looking for. I wasn't even looking for. But my brother and I, like, he took me with my older brother, and he's like, "Yo, you just got like your first big check. Like, come on, take care of yourself. You deserve it. All these years, eight str- eight struggling years, eight fucking years. I struggled to get my first placement. Eight years. It was eight years of working a job, seventy two hours a week. Worked in the kitchen. I ran a janitorial company." I cleaned gyms at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., uh, worked in the, you know, cleaned the projects, like in Philly. And then I went to the studio at 1 a.m. to maybe 3 a.m. and woke up the next day at 7 a.m. and started my day every day the same way. And for eight years, through tears and lots of tears, and I cried a lot out of frustration of, aren't I good enough? Why isn't this happening for me? And blah, 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 blah. It did happen for me. And... Um, I ended up going to a car dealership because my car, like I said, it was a hundred dollar Buick. It was on its last leg, and I'm like, okay, I think it's time to like make a big boy, a big boy move here. And my brother went with me, and he signed for me because I didn't have any credit. I was young, I was 24, 25, but I had a nice big check in my hand, ready to go with a down payment. And um, yeah, I rolled out there with a C5 convertible, and it was bad as shit. And I, it was a reward. It was the one time that I really needed I really needed to know that my life was changing and that I could finally stop being that person that people looked at and was like, you know, he's, he's broke, he's only, he don't got nothing, he's, he's, you know, he's never going to be anything. And I heard it all. I heard it from girlfriends, parents. I heard it from some of my own family. Like, you're never going to be anything. You're just, you're going to waste your life trying to chase this shit. And, uh, yeah, I even didn't talk to, to friends and family for for a while because that's what it took for me to stay straight to stay straight to not have the negativity around me and of course they all come back in your life and like we knew you'd make it like you didn't you didn't but I did so everything I'm telling you right now number one genre I'm curious if rap is the number one how is it under scrutiny number one genre let me see what you guys are saying I'm reading all your comments. Hold on. All right. So about the about rap being the number one genre. No, it's not that rap is the number one genre, or number two genre. That shit doesn't even matter. That's just it's once again, it's where you guys are hanging out. If you're hanging out at Kids R Us, you can't sell to nobody. If you're hanging out in a place where people are, they got their shit together. Like there's rappers out there that might be in their mid 20s that have jobs that like, yeah, I really want to do my next album or mixtape and I need to find someone who's got some good beats. And you know, um, the only problem is the culture of what we've done as producers, we have screwed up. So we have screwed up along the way. And I'm not taking any fucking part in this because I recognized it a long time ago and I, I'm, I put an end to that shit. Um, 42 seconds remaining. All right. My thing is going to, it's going to go off here. So, you know, what, we're going to, um, we're gonna we're gonna uh, pick up this again maybe tomorrow or something um, because I have like it says I have 29 seconds remaining before this shuts down. But all I'm gonna say is it's not the it's the culture of us giving away shit to people to get them to buy stuff from us is what created a lot of the problems. It's not rap, it's us. We made the problem. We were like we wanted to get rappers on our beats when we were up just cu- up and coming and we knew they didn't have money so just give them the fucking beat. That's it. We had 11 seconds. I really appreciate you guys and I hope that. Something I said made enough sense that you guys are going to like change your mindset a little bit today. All right. Peace out. Max Beats.